Dave Cathy, and we're out here today at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming Chuck Wagon Festival. And to do that, I thought we would talk to Luann Waters, who is an expert in Dutch oven cooking. Luann, thanks for talking with us today. Glad to be here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background with uh, Dutch oven cooking. Uh, well, learned uh, probably almost about 25 years ago how to do this, primarily uh, using it in becoming an outdoors woman workshops. Uh -huh. And then I got more interested in the history aspect of it, and that took me in a whole new direction. So, and I primarily teach workshops. I do okay. cooking as well, but I uh, love teaching other people how to do it and for them to find out it's not near as hard as some of them think that it is. Well, take us through that a little bit. If somebody's interested in becoming a, a Dutch oven cook, what, what do they need to do? Uh, get an oven if you don't already have one. <laughs> start with a Dutch oven. Yeah, All start right. with a Dutch okay, oven. Okay, and is, is there like, a, what, what should somebody look for? Uh, well, I, I don't work for lodge manufacturing, but when I know a, a good product and that it's got a good background, because mm -hmm. uh, it's American made, mm -hmm. uh, and they stand behind their product, uh, but you may find that you've got grandma's Dutch oven stored yes. away somewhere, and if you yes. can dig that out, and then you've got the heritage to go with it, but you can buy a new Dutch oven, and then it's going to be a heritage piece of cookware right. for the rest of your family. If you do find grandma's Dutch oven, how do you restore it? Uh, well, if you're lucky, it's maybe been stored properly and there won't be anything other than for you to rinse it out and put a light coating of oil or a mm -hmm. solid vegetable shortening on it. Uh, but yeah, you want it to be clean, no rust. Uh, there's a variety of ways. If it's light rust, that's the one time you would use steel wool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but once you've got an oven seasoned, you don't ever want to touch it with steel wool again. You can use plastic scrubber sponges that are safe for all surfaces. Now, t take us through some of the tools of the trade that you've got here. Uh, lid lifters, because once you've got coals on an oven, you're not going to want to pick anything up barehanded. Uh, there's there's heavyweight gloves. Uh, you can buy them that maybe have a company name on them, but you can also go to a hardware store and tell them that you need welding gloves. <laughs> same. Welding gloves, that's a good a good fix. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's essentially the same kind of glove because it's giving your hands protection. Lid stands, because especially if you're using the camp Dutch ovens, which are the ones that have the three legs underneath yeah. and a flat lid, the underneath side of that lid is almost flat, and you don't want to take it off and set it on the ground because then whatever's on the ground is right. going to stick to it, and yes. you're adding it back to your food. Yes. So you, you can buy a lid stand, or you can use a couple of bricks covered with foil as some place just to keep the underside of the lid clean. You don't have to have an expensive cooking table. Um, and actually, if you use the tables very much, they're not expensive at all because <laughs> they save your back. And clean up, initially you want a natural bristle whisk broom to be able to get the ash and coals off of the lids. And then you're pretty much ready to get started. And that's what, so explain for those who are not completely sure how it works, how does Dutch oven cooking work? Uh, primarily you're able to put heat on top of the pot. That's the reason that the lid is flat and put it underneath. That's why it's on legs because it gives you proper spacing. Literally anything that you would cook in your oven at home, you can cook outside in a Dutch oven. Now, you can use your Dutch ovens even with legs in your oven. Mm -hmm. yeah. And today, we've also got what I refer to as a kitchen Dutch oven. Domed lid, flat bottom, those were made to be used in an oven, and those have been in use since colonial times. I see. Tell us what you've made today. Southwest cornbread. All right. What, what's, what, what all is in there? Uh, cream corn. Uh, Pecani sauce and lots of cheese, grated <laughs> cheese. And well, and, and I think you mentioned to me that it cooked in 45 minutes, right? Yeah, about 45 minutes, which is the same amount of time that it would cook in the oven at home. All right, well, we thought we probably would need a little help out here today. And so we brought out Loretta Barrett Oden, a local chef here who you are, uh, you have your own un unique perspective about this place. Tell us about your background. Well, I am Potawatomi, born and raised in Shawnee. That's, right. uh, that's our tribal headquarters. That's right. And my realm in the food world is um, Native American foods. Uh, it's about uh, sourcing out, cooking uh, those foods that we ate before we were discovered. <laughs> so, that's right we were eating pretty well <laughs> that's right western heritage has many facets and yeah. we're here to explore them all right absolutely i want to you to tell us about this great pot that you brought this dutch oven that you brought in yes indeed you know the of course you know 
pre-contact, we didn't do, we cooked in clay pots and baskets mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the, the iron, the cast iron really became a great trade item. Yeah. So this particular cast iron pot that I have, Dutch oven, mm -hmm. um, I don't know why they're called Dutch. But <laughs> that's the win. <laughs> yeah. Um, this came, as far as I know, uh, in the land run uh -huh. with my great grandmother in a, in a uh, wagon. Wow. And Obviously, it was passed down to her because she was a child at that time. So it's 150 plus years wow. old. For today, tell us what, uh, what lies inside. Well, I have done, uh, as I do a lot, I'm working with the three sisters mm -hmm. of corn, beans, and squash. That's kind of the Native American trilogy of mm -hmm. these plants were grown together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the corn stalk grows, the bean vine uses that as a trellis, the squash is down here with mm -hmm. its fat leaves uh, uh, holding in the moisture and smothering out the weeds. So every tribe has a legend about the Three Sisters. Well, thanks for coming out today and we cannot Absolutely. wait to get into some yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right, we also we had to bring, a, bring in a farmer for this event. <laughs> so we brought in the freshly shorn Joshua Valentine. Chef, good to see you. Good to see you, bud. Man, so Tell us about the lack of facial hair. Everybody that's seen this has got to wonder. Well, you know, I uh, I just turned 40, and uh -huh, I, I, uh -huh. I you know I thought I'd treat myself to a straight razor shave. It won't last. Uh, okay. As soon as I came home, I was immediately told to grow the beard back, so <laughs> it's not going to be around forever. How long is that going to take you? Uh, well, that one took me a few years to get there, yeah. so uh, I don't know. We'll start off. Uh, yeah, start, we'll start from the beginning. Start you know, small. Start small. It's good for small. the face to breathe every once in a while, you know. Yeah. Well, I knew you know we talked recently, and, and you've got a really exciting thing coming up. You've got a new restaurant coming. Tell us what you can about it. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, butcher shop, bistro restaurant concept. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, have been fortunate enough to partner with a ranch to where we're raising our own cows, mm -hmm. our own pigs, our own chickens. And mm -hmm. so uh, all pasture raised, all done the right way. Just uh, they have one bad day. That's when they go uh, <laughs> meet the maker and then, uh, yep. and then they come see me and yep. I get the chance to butcher them the way that I want right. and, uh, and cook it the way that I want, which is over live That's fire, right. open wood. And That's so right. it's going to be a good time. Well, we're, we're, that's coming fall, right? Coming, coming probably fall. Uh, uh, Edmond, East Edmund, 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 second, Edmund. Uh, second, second Coltrane, Coltrane. second right. Coltrane, East of Coltrane. Yeah, well, today you came out here to, to have some fun with us and, yeah. and do some Dutch oven stuff. Tell me a little bit about your outdoor cooking exploits. I I, I did a uh, pork chili verde. So uh, this is from one of the pigs that we raised out there at the ranch. Uh, and then I just built a fire, roasted the chilies and the tomatillos over the fire, the onions, the garlic, uh -huh. the whole works. Uh, set my Dutch oven in there, got it nice and hot, seared it. Seared the pork off, blended everything, threw it in there, some stock, yeah. just let it go, just buried it, and then just let and it just go. Just let, let the and temperature kind of come down. Just let it, yeah, just yeah. let it do its thing for yeah. about four or six hours, and then Standing. I just let it. That uh, they're magical. I mean, you just kind of their magic happens when you yeah. meet. You can walk wood away. And fire, you can, yeah. cast iron, yeah. just walk away, and it's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Can't wait to get into some of this, man. Yeah, I hope it's good. Thanks for coming out. All right. Yeah.